Hello and welcome to the Wolf's Den. I'm Dave here with Mary Ellen and today we are going to be talking about A Game of Thrones Eddard 3. Yes, absolutely. So this is a fairly short chapter in comparison to some others and it's very action-packed. I wouldn't say that we're getting a lot of like backstory or introspection on the characters but we're definitely moving the plot along quite nicely in this chapter. I would say that this entire chapter is basically plot. Uh, there, there isn't a lot of to be read in between the lines on. Really so you read it the same here. way. That's exactly how I saw it when I okay. went through this chapter. Is only I probably have a couple of points that I'll make things that I noticed, but other than that, um, I swear we didn't plan that. <laughs> <laughs> we we so. both went through it separately today a couple times. So here we go. Uh, it starts off. Ned is basically they're at Derry. Arya has gone missing following Nymeria, um yep. biting Joffrey. So uh Veon Poole comes and tells him that they have found Arya. Yeah. Ned wonders who found Arya. Was it our guys or the Lannisters? Right. It was Jory, and she's not been harmed. Ned is very thankful for this. Ned had been basically four days without sleep. Right. That's interesting. I didn't realize... The show never really explicitly explains it. I didn't realize that she had been missing for four days. That's a long time for a little girl to just be lost in the woods. This is one of the first clues that Arya is one tough son of a bitch. Absolutely, be. yeah. Uh, like that she didn't retreat back to camp. She stayed, right? It's not like she was lost. She thinks she stayed away. Yes. She was hiding for four days. I wonder if they never found her, if she would have stayed in hiding. <laughs> Well, one thing that she did have is Nymeria with Yeah, her, oh, that's what I mean. Because her with the wolf, she could... She could sleep comfortably knowing that nothing's going to happen to her because nothing's going to sneak up and try to harm her with Nymeria there. Nymeria will rip whatever's throat out if Absolutely. they try to do that. So, so, but four days is a pretty long time to be on your own, even with your wolf. All right, and then the next thing, Ned asks where she... Well, where the heck is she then? Tell Jory to bring her here at once. And this is where Poole tells him that she's been brought before the king because the queen's men were at the gates. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the first times that they use the word queen's men. And they use it a couple of times. There's Robert's men, Ned's men, and the queen's men. The yeah. queen's men are everywhere around here. There's a bunch of Lannister guards and soldiers and stuff. And she is using her Lannister people to do this. Robert had no inclination to do any of this stuff. This was no. all Cersei. So the queen, and then he says, damn that woman. Find Sansa and bring her to the audience chamber. Her voice may be needed. Yes. Now, now he's going down the tower stairs. And he's They're livid. at Derry. And he is, he is fuming. in what the, he describes as a red rage. <laughs> um... He is fuming. He was tired a couple of minutes ago, and then this happened, and now he's, like, wide awake. And now he's just, like, if they do something, if that bitch does something to my daughter, she will find out what it's like. Yes, absolutely. To raise the wrath of the North, basically. Um, so, basically, it even says that he was heartsick and weary just moments ago. Now his fury is on him filling him with strength. Mm -hmm. As he walks through the castle yard, everyone's staring at him. He almost wanted to run, but he goes, but wait, I'm I'm the I'm a high lord and I'm the hand. I can't run. <laughs> he wanted to run he to his to daughter, run. but he didn't. He kept his composure. Then he talks about how the dairies whose castle they're staying in fought on the other side at the trident. Yes. And now they're Stark men Robert's men and dairy men all confined in a castle that is way too small for this number of people, especially this number of people who don't like each other and tensions are already kind of at a boiling point inside this castle. And now this is happening and it's... So uh, when he gets to this audience chamber, the show did a nice job of showing just how packed yes, cause this it's not scene... Big, it's not even a very big castle. No, right. Tons of people in this audience chamber. Right. It is packed to the gills. Ned sees Arya standing in the middle, and he calls out to her and goes to her. Arya's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And he hugs her, and he's like, oh my gosh, you are so skinny. 
You are so I was weird. trying to envision how, I mean, she must just be like this tiny little like skeleton. And she hasn't eaten in days. She said she found some berries. Yes. So she's probably starving. He's like, are you hurt? And she's like, no, I'm hungry though. I ate some berries, but I couldn't find anything else. And he's like, we'll feed you soon enough. And then he stood up and faces the king. He goes, what is the meaning of this? His eyes swept the room looking for friendly faces, but for, but for his own men, there were few enough. So Raymond Derry was like, I am looking at the ceiling. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so Raymond Derry's like, I want nothing to do with this. Lord Renly wore a half smile. That might mean anything. You know what I actually found interesting? Because George put an annotation on this. Sir Ryan Oh, Derry, I saw it. And, it, and it's odd, and, and he said that this is something that people will do more often in the North if they're knighted, where they will Ex- use read the, the Read the whole sir. annotation. Cause it's like, typically most lords are knights, but they use their lordly t- title once they inherit. Mm-hmm. So Derry's use of his knight's title, despite being a lord, mm-hmm. is unusual in the South. Although in the North, this is more common because knighthood is so much rarer there. Mm-hmm. But this guy prefers to be... F- called sir even though he's a lord which is interesting yeah it's almost like he diminishes his own title and acts as though he's just a mere landed knight Mm -hmm. and i wonder if he does that maybe in respect to one of his older brothers because he's kind of like ned he was never supposed to be the lord of Derry. his brothers both died all of his older brothers are dead well then there was willem Derry, his oldest brother who disappeared with danny like the Dairy Brothers. Oh, right, that's true. The Dairy Brothers, but all are either in exile. Wow, if Kings, George thought of Kingsguard that. I mean, he, he did think of that because he put an annotation on it. Like, <laughs> so, yeah. Like his whole family is dead. He's the only brother from his generation that lived. I think there was four brothers and he's the only one that's alive. But so he, present here is Sir Ram Derry. Raymond, I'm sorry. Yes. Renly. Barristan looked grave. The rest were Lannister men and hostile. Their only good fortune was that both Jamie and Sander were missing, leading searches north and north of the Trident. And then he's like, why have you... Which means that Ned was worried that there was going to be a fight, like an actual fight. Ned is happy that the two most mm. deadly people in the Lannister party aren't there. Yeah, that's true. Why would he be Ned, relieved that they're not there? The only reason he could be relieved that they're not there is because Ned was worried that this was actually going to turn into a bloodbath. Interesting. And... Which is why he was looking for friendly faces. He was trying to figure out how many of his guys were in the room and how many Lannisters were in the room. He's like, if this gets ugly, they're not laying a finger on my daughter. Mm. He's like, if we have to fight and kill our way out of here, then that's what we're doing. That's very interesting. He, and he was thinking, at least the two most deadly people on the Queen side of things here aren't here. Yes. Because if I have to take my people and ride hard for Moat Kalen, then I'm riding hard for Moat Kalen. Mm-hmm. And... The Lancers can try to chase me back to the north, but if they tr- try to set foot on the northern soil, I'll kill all of them, is what kind of what he's thinking here. Um, let's see. Robert's sitting there slumped. You can tell he doesn't want to be here. Nope. He has no interest in this at all. At all. Let's see. Um, the Ned demands of Robert, why was my daughter not brought to me immediately? And... Cersei goes, how dare you speak to your king in this manner? Right, right. Robert's like, shut up. Quiet woman, he snapped. I'm sorry, Ned. I never meant to frighten the girl. It seemed best to bring her here and get the business done with quickly. And what business is that? Ned put ice in his voice. In other words, Ned is making himself as threatening as he Yeah, it's like your serious voice. It's like... Yeah, like when your voice goes Ned isn't being like happy. Ned is doing the... If you F with me, I swear to God, you want to see a bloodbath in this room? And what business is that? Yeah. Even though it's Robert and it's his friend, he's like, if you guys do, I do something that harms my daughter. You're going to see an entirely different side of me that you guys have never seen before. So Cersei steps forward and answers. You know full well, Stark. This girl of yours attacked my son. Her and her butcher's boy. That animal of hers tried to tear his arm off. That's not true, Arya said loudly. She just bit him a little. He was hurting Micah. Joff told us what happened, the queen said. You and the butcher boy beat him with clubs while you set your wolf on him. That's not how it was, Arya said, close to tears again. Ned put a hand on her shoulder. 
Yes, it is, Prince Joffrey insisted. They all attacked me. And she threw lion's tooth in the river. <laughs> Sorry. And, then, and Ned and then, can't help but notice that he stared at the floor when he was talking. He didn't so much as glance, glance at Arya when he was talking. Liar. Arya calls him a liar. He tells her to shut up. Now Robert's irritated and he says enough loudly. Tell it all and tell it true. I like that line. Yes. It is a great crime to lie to a king. So Arya tells the story. Mm-hmm. And, uh... Renly starts laughing. This is my favorite part of I the I love whole it. Thing. Go ahead. Read it. It is, uh... When he got to the point where Arya got to the point where she threw Joffrey's sword in the middle of the trident, Renly Baratheon began to laugh. The king bristled. Sir Barristan, escort my brother from the hall before he chokes. Lord Renly stifled his laughter. My brother is too kind. I can find the door myself. He bowed to Joffrey. Perchance later you can tell me <laughs> how a nine-year-old girl the size of a wet rat managed to disarm you with a broom handle and throw your sword in the river. As the door swung shut behind him, Ned heard him say, Lion's tooth. <laughs> <laughs> and guffaw once more. <laughs> That's a great. I uh, really enjoyed that earlier. At this point, uh, then Joffrey tells his story, and it was completely ridiculous. And Robert's like, what in the seven hells am I supposed to make of this? He, he says, says one thing, thing she, she says, says another. Th- and then Ned goes... They were not the only ones present. He had sends Sansa up there, and Sansa does the "I have no idea what happened" thing. Yes, I don't. Uh, I don't remember. Everything happened so fast. I didn't see. This infuriates Arya. You calls her rotten, rotten. <laughs> and then she launches at her, knocks her over. Liar! Then, liar! Liar! And she's punching her. Yeah, and pummels her, <laughs> and then Ned grabs Arya off of her. Um. Uh, Actually, Ned shouted, and Jory pulls her off. Her mm-hmm. Sansa was pale and shaking, and Ned lifts her back to her feet. And he's like, "Are you hurt?" Um, but she was staring at Arya as though she didn't seem to hear him. But Ned earlier in the chapter says, "I want Sansa to be there in case there becomes, you know, I need her version to stack up to whatever Arya is going to say." And this is where I had an observation that I kind of wanted to talk about, or did you want to talk about? It? No, you can talk about that in one second. Let me just, like, finish this thought. Because yours is a little bit different. Yeah. Whatever Sansa told him wasn't exactly what happened, but was enough truth that he thought ahead of time it might be a good idea to summon her. At least some of the things that she said to him, he was like, yeah, we might want her there. And then he brings her there, and she doesn't even say a word. Of say a word. Now, we don't think she told the there. full truth. But she did say something that made him think she might be worthy. Yes. It might be worth having her here. Well, in my opinion, it's quite clear that she didn't tell him the whole truth. Because... Because if he told, if she had told Ned the whole truth, they would already be which packed is, and ready which to go is that, home. Because there's no way that Sansa would still be betrothed to Joffrey if Joffrey just tried to kill Ned's daughter. Because the full truth is, is that Joffrey tried to kill Arya. And the only reason Arya is still alive is because Nymeria bit him. If Nymeria didn't bite his sword arm, Arya was dead. Now, does Arya clearly communicate that to her dad? No. I mean, Arya has been starving to death for four days. And yeah. And she's just happy that she's not in trouble. She was scared that she was going to be Absolutely. In right. But what's Sansa clear, in these four days was never like, oh my God, he tried to kill her. Do you think he did kill her? That's what I would be thinking. Like, if, do you if think my that little, they found her and killed her? Because he tried to kill her in front of me. That's the paranoia that I would have. But it's clear... That Ned is not aware of the fact that Joffrey yes. tried to kill Arya. Because she had four days to tell him that. Yes. Now, granted, he was leading search parties for large portions of it, but Ned specifically tells us that he called Sansa to him and asked her to tell him what happened. And say she didn't tell him right away. After a day or two, I would be starting to think, did he, like, have her killed or something? Because Arya is still missing. I would, at any point, if she says, I need to speak to my father... She could have made that happen. Yes. I have something to tell him that's worth... It seems very clear. Because Ned, first and foremost, wouldn't have been weary. Ned would be furious. Ned would be refusing to allow his daughter to marry him. If he Ned knew... would be turning in his badge of office and riding back As north, soon as they found as Arya. As soon as they found Arya. Yeah, I agree. If... He was aware of the fact there wouldn't that the be Crown a, there wouldn't be a dire wolf dying. No, there, there wouldn't would be, be none of any, this happening. Yeah. If Sansa told him that Joffrey, 
the only reason Ari is alive is because Namiria jumped and bit his sword arm before he could kill her. Right, exactly. Because Arya was backed up against a tree with nowhere else to go. He had harried her all the way back up against a tree. There was literally one more second. If Nymeria was arrived a second later, Arya was going to be dead. He was go- He was literally about to kill her. So, so that Sansa's- much has not been told to Ned. Because Ned, there's no way that Ned's reaction towards this whole thing... And his attitude towards Joffrey would be the way it is if he was aware of the fact that Joffrey tried to kill his daughter. No. So he obviously does not know that. So Sansa hid, seems to have hid it from him. Because Sansa seems full, still all the way through several books seems to intent on blaming Arya for what happened here. I agree. So so obviously this makes Arya infuriated and she attacks Sansa, at which point Cersei says, the girl is as wild as that filthy animal. I want her pu- punished. And Robert's like, what What do you mean? She's like eight. She's a child. Children fight. Right. There's no, it's over. No lasting harm was done in the Queen's furious. Joffrey will carry, carry those scars, scars forever. for the rest of he his goes, life. So he will. Perhaps they will teach him a lesson. <laughs> and Ned... See to it that your daughter's disciplined. I'll do the same with my son. Gladly, your grace. Ned said with vast relief. And then Cersei's like, what are the dire wolf? What are the beasts that savage your son? And, and then Jory, after Robert said, I'd forgotten about the damn wolf. Jory spoke up quickly. We found no trace of the dire wolf, your grace. And Robert's like, no, all right, so be it. And he didn't look unhappy. He was like, all right, cool. All right, good. This is over. Yep. And then the queen says, a hundred dragons to the man who brings me that skin. Robert goes, that's a costly pelt. I want no part of this woman. You can damn well buy that with fur with uh, Lannister gold. Yep. And then she insults him in front of the entire court area. Yes. Um, calling him niggardly. Uh, Robert's face darkened with anger. <laughs> There's even an annotation that says, this denigration of Robert in front of dozens of his retainers and guards reveals just how public his marriage dysfunction must be. Exactly. Yes. That was bad. Uh, yeah. And then he's like, that would be a fine trick to get a wolf without a, or a pelt without a wolf. She's like, we do have a wolf. Mm. Took Ned a second to realize what it meant. And then Robert says, as you will have Sir Ellen see to it. Ned goes, Robert, you can't mean this. And he tells her to get, tells him to give Sansa a dog. She'll be happier for it. Dire Wolf is a savage beast, blah, 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 blah. At this point, Sansa finally figured out what was happening. Mm -hmm. She protests. Arya gets angry. Mm -hmm. Lady wasn't there. You leave her alone. Uh, Sansa's pleading with him. This is where Ned gets angry again. Mm -hmm. For the love you bear me, don't do this. For the love you bore my sister. Mm -hmm. Yes. Robert stares at his wife. Damn you, sissy, he said with loathing. Now, Ned is furious. Yeah. He stands up, then do it yourself, Robert. At least have the courage to do it yourself. So now Ned is insulting him in front of his entire court, too. Yes, this is very, this is all just a sh- shit show. Um, Robert looked at Ned with flat, dead eyes and left without a word. Now I want to talk about this. Okay. This is... Exactly what I have talked about, about a thousand times. This is the first example of where you just see that Robert is a broken man. Robert's not what he was. Robert is miserable. Robert has lost everything that he actually cared about in this world. And now he just has a whole bunch of stuff that he doesn't give a crap about. Mm -hmm. He's not materialistic. He doesn't want to be a king. He's not power hungry. He's not Mm -mm. any of those things. This guy was thrust into a life that he did not want. And everything that he did want was taken from him. And on top of that, to add insult to injury, Mm. he is married to the worst freaking human being in the entire realm. Who just makes him even more miserable. Robert is gone. He just doesn't feel like dealing with bullshit anymore. That's why this happens. This happens because Robert can't stand listening to Cersei. No, yes. There's the the, the, the dynamic is played into all this, yes. Yes. And Ned steps forward and is like, Sir, Sir Lynn Payne's not touching that freaking wolf. I like this part. Can I just read this? Sure. Um, 
He left the room with his eyes burning and his daughter's wails echoing in his ears and found the direwolf pup where they chained her. Ned sat behind her, or beside her for a while. Lady, he said, tasting the name. I like the way he wrote that. He had never paid much attention to the names the children had picked, but looking at her now, he knew that Sansa had chosen well. She was the smallest of the litter, the prettiest, the most gentle and trusting. She looked at him with bright golden eyes, and he ruffled her thick gray fur. I, I just like how he had, like, Ned really, like, at the, for the first time, he's like, wow. He looked at her, and he's like, this is kind of like killing a piece of Sansa, because it's like Sansa and a wolf, you know? And so, shortly after, he has ice brought to him. And then he says, choose four men and take this body north and bury her at Winterfell, because Cersei will never get this skin. Under any circumstances. Like, they will have to kill me. They will have to sack Winterfell. Yes, again. <laughs> to get this skin. They're mm-hmm. going to have to scale over 80-foot walls through a dry moat and then up 100-foot walls with us raining arrows Yes, on I will give you four guys. Yep. Four guys are guarding this skin. And they are to ride hard for Winterfell. And bury her there. And bury her there. Um... When he was walking back from the tower, give him up to sleep, he bumped into the hound. Mm-hmm. And his riders coming through the castle gate. They were back from their hunt. There was something slung over the back of his destrier. A heavy shape wrapped in a bloody cloak. Mm. No sign of your daughter, hand. The hound rasped. But the day was not wholly wasted. We got her little pet. He reached down and shoved it off, and Ned is like, oh my god, I don't know what the heck I'm going to tell Arya. He was thinking it was Nymeria, but it wasn't. It was just the butcher's boy. Yeah. Not just the butcher's boy. Right. It was the butcher's no, boy. No, yeah, Martha. not just. Uh, his body covered in dried blood. He had been cut almost in half from shoulder to waist by some terrible blow struck from above. Ned is disgusted. He's like, you rode him down. And the hound laughed and was like, he ran not, not very, very fast. fast. So this is kind of a very straightforward chapter. The, the, this is the introduction to the ruthlessness of the Lannisters. Exact, 100%. Um, like, what type of people these are. Yeah, like, thus far things have been rather courtly. Sto- yeah, yeah. When, when in the north, the story is rather courtly. Yes, Ned beheads somebody in the first scene where you meet them. And you know that the Lannisters are a little different than the Starks, a little more sketchy. There's some sketchier stuff going on. But this really drives home the point that these people are brutal and savage. That they will kill anybody. They don't care. Uh, they are a family devoid of honor, if you will. Mm-hmm. Especially, especially Cersei. Oh, absolutely. Her brothers have some honor to them. Some. And even Tywin has some, some. honor to he, them. They, they all have Tywin some. Tywin is, is the most pragmatic of them. But Cersei is just devoid of anything. Uh, I agree. Cersei is barely human. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, she's barely human. She was reveling. This in, whole thing. She was she, really into this whole thing. She enjoyed tormenting Ned's little girls. She got a lot of enjoyment out of it. Mm-hmm. Um, like, this was, like, the most fun thing that she's done in years. Like, get trying to have Arya severely punished. <laughs> which she had to have probably known. She might even be smart enough to have gone for that first. Knowing, knowing that, that there's no way nowhere. Robert is going to yeah, let them lay a finger that. on she Ned's even kids. Knows that. Just so she could then turn around and demand... That the wolves be killed, which she already admitted at Winterfell when they were alone, that she was not going to allow those dire wolves to get to court. She said it right at the breakfast table when Bran fell. Those beasts are not coming. And remember, uh, Jamie. And they end up Jamie, not coming. Jamie laughed and was like, "Well, good luck getting them away from those wolves. Follow those Stark girls every place they go. Like, good luck getting them, separating them. Those wolves will follow them everywhere. Have you watched them? Those wolves literally are like their shadow everywhere. One of those girls go." That wolf is right next to them. So, this was Cersei's scheme to get rid of them. One of them's gone, and the other one she had killed. Mm-hmm. So. Absolutely. She got her way. We'll say that she got her way. 
All right. Well, I don't really have anything else I wanted to say about this chapter. Oh, no. Um, I think that any big Game of Thrones fan, if you've seen the show, pretty much goes similar to that. A um, couple of minor differences, but overall, yeah, I think this is more just moving. The only real difference is that they elaborate on how Arya was missing for days. Yeah. Whereas they don't really do any sort of And I think Cersei's the on one who, who ushers Sansa forward. It's not Ned who says, bring Sansa forward. It's interesting. I would want to go back and rewatch that. Almost, that would be almost like them showing that she's not really as stark and that she's playing for the other team. I'm, I'm, I'm positive that Cersei ushers is the one who says, Sansa, come forward, my child. I'm positive. But in this chapter, in the book... It's Ned who plans on having Sansa at the ready in the and back. And then she betrays him. It's Maybe it's a little bit of almost of a foreshadowing of how Sansa has already started because she wants to be the queen betraying her father. Maybe. Ned, the entire purpose of her there, Ned That's brought her there to That's what I just said. That's why I'm story. bringing it up. That's a major difference. Yes, that is a major difference. So. I'm with you. Cool. But it made it more clear to the viewer that way when you have Cersei. Yeah, because if you have Ned bring her up, everyone would be wondering why she's lying. Yeah, I get. I I can see how it could could go either way, but because she went up there and she lied. Yep. So, anyways, I guess if we miss anything, please feel free to leave a comment about it because I always like to know what other people think. And uh, I guess thank you for listening, and we'll check you out next time.